Hey, how's it going? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a CraftSmith website to a production web server using FTP. So there's a few things we have to do besides just dragging the files over to make everything work, but I'll take you through step by step how to do it. Let's get into it. Okay, step number one, we have to export the website's database. So in this example, we're going to use a website that I built in a tutorial series, this Moto Venture website. So the first step is to export the CraftCMS database to a .sql file. So if we log into CraftCMS by going to slash admin, then we go to utilities, backup database, you can download a backup of the CraftCMS database, and this will be a .sql file. Now, if you have PHP admin installed, you can navigate to your project's database, in my case, Motoventure, and then go to the export tab, and then press go. And this will download a SQL file for the whole CraftCMS website. And once that downloads, you should have a file called motoventure.sql or whatever your project name is, .sql. This is the SQL file that will upload to the production web server's MySQL database. So assuming you already have MySQL installed on your server, let's use a tool like MySQL Workbench, which is free, to connect to MySQL on the production server. So here's my production server. I'll just connect to this. And now I can create a new database on the production server. So I will click this right up here, plus. Let's call the database Modaventure. The character set will be UTF-8. And then the collation will be UTF-8 Unicode CI. So we'll go ahead and apply that. So now that we have a new database created, let's go up to server data import. And we want to import from a self-contained file because we have a SQL file. So we'll click that and browse. And then I'm just going to drag my SQL file in to the browse window and press open. Finally, we have to select a default target schema. So let's choose the database we just created there and then press start import. And that completed successfully. So if we go up and expand our database, we now have a bunch of tables here so we can expand them. And if these don't show up, you might have to right click and press refresh all. But here are all of our CraftCMS tables for the website. So step one is done. We've exported the database from the local development server, and then we've imported it into the production server. So step two is we're going to create a new environment configuration file for the production server. So if we look at the code, we have this .env file, and this is for the development environment. So we want to copy this whole file and create a production version. So I'll copy and paste this here. I'm going to rename this .dev for now. And then I'm going to name this one just .env. This will be for production. And let's change a few things to match the production server settings. So this should be production. This is correct even for the production server. So is the database port. We created a new database on the production server with the same exact name, Motoventure, so we don't have to change that. You probably will have to change the username and password for your production server. I won't put my settings in here, but make sure these are accurate for your production server. And down here, these three things are important. The primary site URL. So for me, the IP address of my production site is this. So I will just paste this in here. And the path is going to be var www.motoventure.com slash web slash uploads. We'll create this in a few minutes when we upload all the files, but I know that this is where the site will live on my server. So in my case, I'm just using an IP address. I don't have a domain name for this test website, but if you have a domain name for your production site, then go ahead and put that in here instead of an IP address. But for testing purposes, I will just use this. All right, so that's all we have to do for the environment configuration for now. So go ahead and save this file. And next we will upload all the files to the production server. And that's where we're going to actually create this path that you see here. So don't worry about that yet. You'll see how that fits in in just a minute. All right, so on to step three, where we're actually going to upload all of the website files to the production server. So I'm going to use a free app here called FileZilla to FTP the files up. So assuming you already have Apache installed on your production server, you should have a folder called var www already set up. So in here is where we'll create the new folder for our website. So let's right click and create a directory. 
we'll call it motoventure.com. And if we navigate into that, here we have the files on the left for the website. So these are all the craft files. So we're going to select everything except for, let's see, we don't need this at the moment. We don't need composer stuff. We don't need this example environment config. We don't need the development environment config. We just need the production environment configuration here. Web, vendor, templates, storage, modules, config. These are all craft files. We'll upload them. This Motoventure templates file folder is just the HTML templates when I was building out the site originally, but I'll just upload that anyway. So if we select all of these and drag them over, this is going to take a while. There are thousands of files, and this is one reason it's not really recommended that you use FTP to deploy CraftsMS websites. It can be a bit tedious and a little bit tricky to update over time, but it's a totally a viable way to do it. Uh, it just takes a little while while you wait for this. All right, so that just completed, and now we have all of the website files on the production server. So to recap, we have the database migrated from development up to production. Awesome. Now we have the website files migrated from development up to the production server. So we have database and we have files. The next thing we have to do is set the correct file permissions on some of these folders so Craft is able to write to those folders. So let's do that. So step three, setting the appropriate file permissions on the website folders and files so Craft can access them. So first let's SSH into the production server. So I'll do root at my IP address for the server. This will obviously look different for you. And once I'm logged in, I'll go to var www.motoventure.com. That's the folder we just created and uploaded all of the files to. So once we're in here, let's list out what we have. So there are a few folders Craft needs to write to. The first one is the storage folder. So on an Apache server, the user and group that needs permissions is www-data. So we will give that user permission to edit this folder. So I'll type sudo ch own to give ownership to www data. That's the user. And then the group is www data. And I want to give them access to this storage directory recursively. So not only the directory, but all of the files in it. Cool. So the next thing it needs access to is the uploads folder. So if we go into the web directory, you see, we have this uploads folder here. So let's give it permission to edit that folder too. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow to get to the previous command and then go uploads. Recursive, go. All right, so there's one more it needs to write to and that is this CP resources directory, which Craft creates automatically. So we'll do the same thing for that. CP resources. All right, so that's all we should have to do for now on the file permissions front. So the next step is to create a virtual host configuration file for the Apache server and this is what that file looks like. So here we have virtual host, and then we want to run on port 80 because we don't want to have to go to mysite.com colon some port number, right? We just want to go port 80. So it's just the main domain. And then the server name, this will be your domain name, right? So your domain.com. But in my case, because I'm using an IP address, I'll just put that there. And the document root will be the web directory within the craft CMS website not just the motoventure.com folder. We need to get into the web directory because that's where all the public files live for the craft site. And the same thing here, we create a directory with a path to that web folder. And then we want to allow from all, this is important, so that it can all be accessed by people on the internet. And these are just some error log configurations. You don't need these, but these are helpful in debugging. So I'm gonna leave them in there. So now that we have a virtual host configuration file for the site, let's upload this to the server. So once again, I'll go to FileZilla and I'm going to go to the root of the server. I'll go into etc. and then Apache and then into sites available. And this is where we will drag our new configuration file for the virtual host into. And now let's go back to the terminal and let's enable that virtual host configuration by typing sudo a2 n site. So we want to use Apache 2, that's A2, to enable a website. And the name of the site is the name of our configuration file, which is motoventure.conf. So we'll hit that. And now it says we just have to reload Apache. So we'll type sudo system C 
ATL Reload Apache 2. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's test and see if the website works. So we'll go to a web browser and let's open a new tab and I'll paste in my IP address for my production server. Obviously put in your domain name if you've configured one and hit enter. Nice, there you go. We have a craft CMS website loading on a production server now visible to the world, but this might not have worked for you. And that's because there are a lot of variables on the production server. For example, craft CMS requires certain PHP extensions. So you might have to install some of those to get this to work. So if it's not working for you and it's not obvious on the screen, it's not telling you what the exact error is. Let me show you where you can look for some errors. So back in the terminal, I'm going to go back to the root directory for the project. And again, here we see we have the storage folder. Let's navigate into that. And in here we have a logs folder. So let's navigate into that. And in here we have several different types of logs. Two important ones are web.log and php errors.log for figuring out what's going on, why the site's not working. So I'm gonna use vim to view web.log. Don't worry about the ones with numbers after them. They're just older versions that are still there. We always want the dot log. So let's open that up. And you see we get all kinds of information here, but if the site is failing to load, there will probably be some clue in here. And we can also look at php errors.log. There's nothing in here at the moment, but if there was some configuration, some PHP extension that wasn't loading and that was required, uh, you'd probably get an error in here for that. There's one other place you can check for errors, and that is in var log Apache 2. So the important file here is error.log, because if we look at our virtual host configuration, we are spitting out any errors to Apache log directory slash error.log. So this is the Apache log directory and this is error.log. So if we look at that, so we can see there's a lot of information being output here. At the moment, most of these are just minor warnings, but if there was a real issue with the website loading, there might be some information there. So let's try to log into the CraftCMS admin panel on the production website now. So I'll go to slash admin. Log in with my username and password. And if you go to utilities, system report, and scroll down, it will list all of the requirements that Craft needs to be able to run. And it'll tell you if they pass or if there's an issue with one of them. So in this case, the memory limit and the max execution time, which are settings on the server, are not up to Craft CMS's preferred standards. So this is a good place to check for things that aren't quite right so that you can fix them. But there is one thing we should probably fix and that you'll probably run into, which is when you go to upload an image or any file for that matter, by default on an Apache web server, you're limited to a two megabyte file upload. So we'll probably want to increase that. So let me show you how to fix that. So we'll go back to the terminal here and we want to find the php.ini file. So in my case, that lives in etc. php my PHP version number, and then Apache 2. So in this directory, we see we have a php.ini file. So let's open that in the editor. So there are three values I want to update here. And the first one is upload max file size. And that limits the maximum file size of file uploads. So I can search by typing forward slash and then what I'm looking for. So upload underscore max and hit enter. And you can see by default, it's only two megabytes. So you can't upload any files larger than two megabytes. That's not gonna work. So I'm gonna change this to 32 megabytes. So I will edit by pressing I and then escape to go out of edit mode. The next one is post max size. So I'll type forward slash post max, enter. This is limited to eight megabytes. So again, I want to increase that. So I'll type shift A to get to append mode, which brings me to the end of the line here. And then I'll change this to 32 and then I'll press escape to get out of edit mode. And the last one is memory limit, which actually in Crafts CMS, we were getting a warning. If we go back to utilities system report, it was saying the memory limit wasn't up to its standards. It requires at least 256 megabytes of memory. So let's fix that. I'm going to find it first, memory limit and then I'll edit it. So it's 128 now, Craft wants at least 256. I'm just gonna bump it up to 512 because I know my server has a good amount of memory. 
So I'll press escape to get out of edit mode and then I can save everything by typing colon W to write my changes and then colon Q to quit and close the file. So I'm gonna restart Apache just for good measure that we might not have to in this case, but I'll type sudo Apache TTL restart. And that's just giving me a little error because I don't have a domain name configured as the server name. But if we go back to the CraftCMS admin panel and refresh, we see that the memory limit is now fixed. Max execution time is another error we're getting right now. It wants a minimum of 120 seconds. Right now it's only set to 30. So let's see if we can fix that too. So again, I'll edit php.ini and I'll search for max execution time. There it is. So it wants at least 120 seconds. So let's edit that here. I have 120 and write and quit. We can combine the write and quit in the same command here. And I don't think we need to restart the server. So let's just go back to this page and refresh. Yes, actually we do need to restart Apache. So let's do that. So I'm just hitting up hour to get the previous commands, which is pretty handy. So restart the Apache server and refresh. There we go. We no longer have any errors in the requirements for Craft CMS. And if we go to assets and we try to upload a file, this image is 24 megabytes. Let's see if it uploads. Ah, so this is another issue you might run into, which is Craft CMS itself has a 16 megabyte upload limit. So let's fix that. Let's go back to the code and go to config general.php. And we have to create a new config value here called max upload file size. By default, this is 16 megabytes. So let's double it to 32 megabytes. So to roughly get there, because this is measured in bytes, let's do 34 million. 34 million bytes will be 34,000 kilobytes, which will be 34 megabytes or 32 megabytes or so, right around there anyway, close enough. So let's save that and we have to upload this file again. So I will do that in FileZilla. So I'll go back to bar www into ModoVenture. And then let's sync these so that as I go into config, it moves both of them into config and I'll upload general.php. Now, if we go back to the site and refresh, let's try to upload that image again. So this is a 24 megabyte image. Once again, let's drag it in. And there you go. It is actually uploading the image instead of giving us an error. But let's check it out now that we've uploaded a preview file here. And there you go. We've uploaded a 24 megabyte image. Obviously you never want to display this in a web page. You'd want to resize it, but there you go. Uploads are working. And if we click this, our whole website is on a production web server available for the world to see and enjoy. One final note, actually, if we look at the Kerasimus admin panel on the production server, we don't have the settings link here. So admin changes are disabled by default on a production version of CraftCMS. We can fix that if you want to be able to change admin level settings. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's go back to the code. And here where it says allow admin changes, it will only, and also dev mode if you want debugging, it will only let you do that on the development server. So it checks, is it the development server? Yes or no. So we could just change this to true. And if we uploaded this, general.php will upload and then we'll refresh the site. We now can get to the settings section and make admin level changes on the production website. But by default, when you're using a production.env file, it will disable this so you can't break your live website. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. There are a million variables depending on what you are running on your server, what version of PHP you have, and a bunch of other things. But I tried to cover it as best I can in this video. If you have problems or run into issues, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to help you as best I can. But otherwise, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos on CraftCMS as well as some cool Python stuff, React, some HTML, CSS stuff, then make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.